biggest challenges you went through starting a brokerage? There's going to be people oh, watching this and they're thinking that's yeah. the step. Um, Which again, I'm not down on that. There's, if that's what they want to do, that's what they want to do. That's awesome. Well, yeah. Um, to, what were the what were the positives of it? Let me ask you this: What were the positives? yeah the positives? Um, I mean, you know, the, you know, I was worried that when I went independent that I was going to lose business somehow because I'd been coal banker for so long, right. and that definitely wasn't the case. Like it didn't miss a beat. Like every every you know everything that could have possibly went well went well is like we didn't even change it was like nothing really changed yeah. um and so you know th- you know it was a good experience you know th- th- where i where i had the the most struggle was um you know going through 07 and 08 was was definitely um was painful um major major drop in the marketplace um you just couldn't have you, you know i tried to work my way through that you know outwork you know but my lesson was um the lesson i walked out of 07 08 it took me till about 2009 or 10 to like get back to where i was almost like i had that much of a setback financially yeah. um and um you know i had to get back into production i'd stepped out of production i gotta get back into production again which that's like getting let you know let out of jail for the weekend and having to go back on monday that's like that's the last thing you want to do if you've ever <laughs> stepped out of production yeah and yeah. you know i really enjoyed that and i was you know i was i was spending more of the time on the coaching and training stuff that we were doing and um, that was really my passion. I really loved helping agents. I really didn't care about you know going and selling another house personally. So um, you know that was you know trying to step out of production was the hardest thing. And and the first time I did it, it didn't work. I got thrown back into production. The second time it didn't work, I got thrown back into production. And finally, you know, I had the right mentor in 08 or nine. Um, I read a book um, called Simple Numbers, Straight Talk, Big Profits, which was. It, you know, my, 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 my native genius is not the accounting side of things. Right, um, I don't right. make it rain, but, but that wasn't what that part of the business wasn't, um, wasn't my strength. And so, you know, I had to, I had to learn, you know, the financials and how to really run it like a business. And, um, ultimately, you know, got the business running, running at 22% pre-tax profit without me in it. And, um, you know, that was a, a huge win because, you know, I think when we first started, it was like negative 3% <laughs> uh, profit wow. without, yeah. without me in it. And yeah. so we, we figured out how to, you know, how to run it lean and mean and, and, and make it, you know, make it make some money, but it was, you know, it was in a lot in Oklahoma average sale price, 135,000. So like we really had to lean it, you know, we had to be running a lean machine in order for us to, to produce the way we were. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so that was, you know, that was the painfulest part of that whole, whole time period. Um, it was still that fun. That seems like- to be pretty common with, I mean, you, you know, Aaron Ken. Yeah, you know, yeah, good no, buddy right. of mine. I've known Aaron now for a long time, and and you know Aaron with his own brokerage. I mean, when he ran the numbers and took his personal production out, they were yeah. completely upside down. Right, and it's just like he got to a point. It's like okay, you know, again, he moved his old brokerage over here to right. EXP, you know, a few years ago. Um, but but that seems to be the case for a lot of broker owners, independents. It's like you know if they're not actively in there doing the stuff, it's like you know you're upside down. Yeah, in the numbers, I think most people it can be a challenge. You weren't as leveraged as you wanted to be. No, with your no, brokerage. no. There was always that. There was always that threat that you know I'm either gonna get a check or I'm writing a check, and I don't know which one it's gonna be this month. And you know, going into <laughs> winter months, you know, you can you can only lean out so much, right? Where you know you can't just let go of everybody, and you know. But you know, there's half of the sales in most markets in the country, half of the sales you know in the in the winter time that there are in the summertime, and so you know you can be doing really well, but then you have that seasonality that always kicks in. And, um, you know, with you not in production, you, you know, you're not really able to move the needle as well. And um, it certainly makes that a challenge to, 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 you know, to make sure that you're, you know, you're yeah. net, net profit at the end of the year. Yeah. Well, it, it, it takes me back to 2008. I remember with my team, it's like, you know, all of a sudden we go from, you know, 20 closings a month to two. Yeah. You know, and the, uh, the bills don't go away. I still got nope. three people on staff. You know, I got to pay them every two weeks. I still got my, all my marketing costs, which go up because I'm yeah. doing everything I can to find more business for right. my team. I mean, it's like, you know, I still got to pay my bills. I mean, yep. I was, it was brutal, you know? So yeah. all those fixed costs and stuff, I would not want to be an independent broker owner right now in terms no, of just, not, with, especially with not market. right now. Yeah. Not now. There's, That's there's this so is not the time now. you want to be uh, doing that. I wouldn't think. Yeah, for sure.